What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here, continuing the reading of the Bitcoin Operations Technology Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the contributors of this amazing venture. Today, newsletter number 17, and oh, it's a mighty one, the 2018 Year in Review Special. Up here, stay ready. This is a Wumbo-sized newsletter, and it will take a while until we have read it. So stay tuned. This is a good one. December 28, 2018. This week's newsletter is a special year-end edition summarizing notable developments in Bitcoin during all of 2018. Despite the extended length of this newsletter, we regret that it only covers a tiny fraction of the work put into dozens of open source projects by hundreds of contributors. Without those low-level contributions, the high concept ideas described in this newsletter would be just empty words. And and so we extend our most sincere thanks to all of you, all of you who contribute to Bitcoin development this year. Uh, and this I can just second, thank you to all these dedicated individuals making Bitcoin a reality. January, hundreds of Lightning Network channels were opened on Testnet before at the start of the year. But January 2018 saw a few businesses and users start using Lightning payments with real Bitcoins on mainnet. The pioneers tagged their own actions as reckless. But this did little to stop other experimenters from putting real money at risk at the nascent payment network. This month also saw publications of the Snore-based MUSIC interactive multi-signature protocol by Gregory Maxwell, Andrew Poelstra, Yannick Soirin, and Peter Woolley. This provided the same security as Bitcoin's current multi-sig, but can often reduce the amount of transaction data required down to a single nominal-looking public key and signature. This not only reduces overhead and cost, it also increases privacy by making basic multi-sig transactions look identical to single-sig transactions. And here we see for a, uh, the receive script and the spend data script or the signature script. Uh, single-sig, the current script, would be a pub key and object multi-sig and then the signature. For the bare multi-sig in the current script, it would be two, the public key and the public key and the public key and a three, and op check multi-sig. And then for the spend data, it would be op and signature and signature. Multi-sig or musig would be pub key with a open check sig or op check sig, and then a signature. So identical to the single signature or current script of a pay to public key script. Isn't that fantastic? Scalability and privacy. Building on the idea that music or something like this could become possible in Bitcoin, Maxwell further describes Taproot, a powerful optimization for Merkleized alternative scripts, uh, script trees, Merkleized uh, alternative script trees. Just as music allows a basic multisig to look like single sig, Taproot allows even the most complex possible Bitcoin script to look like a single sig. If its participants cooperate with each other, but if they don't, they still receive the full security of their chosen script. Uh, this pr uh, provides an even larger set of users, with re which reduces overhead, reduces costs, and increases privacy. And here we again see the receive script and the spent data. Again, for a single user pay to public key hash, as we detailed earlier. For cooperative users, uh, which are the early mass proposals, it would be a hash and then op mast. It would be the signature, the pub key, op check sig, and then the hash and a couple flags. For the cooperative users in the tab root, uh, so this would be not the worst case, it would be pub key, op check multi sig, and the signature. Again, identical to the pay to public key. What a January this was. Lightning, Schnorr, and Mast. Fantastic. <laughs> February. As if Taproot's potential benefit weren't enough, February saw Gregory Maxwell's description, a construction of it called Graftroot. 
that would allow the people currently authorized to spend a coin to create additional set of conditions that allow spending the coin without creating a new transaction. Without creating a new transaction. At any point, any of the authorized set of conditions could be used to spend the coins. For example, if a coin can currently be spent by agreement between both Alice and Bob, that would be a two of two multisig, they could both agree to allow it to be spent by any two, Alice, Bob, and their lawyer, Charlie, a two out of three multisig. And this could make the choice years after first receiving the coins without creating a new transaction. This could further increase efficiency, privacy, and especially for certain off-chain contract pro protocols. Huge, huge. Meanwhile, Lightning Network developer Olulua Osotunkun, well, roast beef, and Connor Fromknecht described a new way to make multi-path payments over Lightning. Multi-path payments are payments with parts split across multiple channels. For example, Alex can send part to Zed through her channel with Bob and part of it through her channel with Charlie. A single payment would be everything through Alice, through Bob, through Zed, and the multi-path would be Alice, to either Bob and uh, Charlie, but ultimately both payments or both parts of the single payment arrive at said. The authors noted that Lightning Network uh, pro provides native support for multi-path payments by using the same commitment pre-image or hash lock for each part of the payment but that using this mechanism on loan, third parties to detect that they are handling different parts of the same payment. They then describe a more complex protocol that could prevent this correlation and potentially provide other benefits. Whether the simple method or the more complex method is used, either could significantly enhance the usability of Lightning Network by removing the constraint that a user, user must have a single channel with enough funds to make a payment. For example, in the current protocol, if Alice has two channels, each with, over, with a bit more over $100 available, she can securely send to set a maximum of $100 in a single payment. With a multi-path payment, Alice can spend 200 by splitting the payment across two channels. February also closed with a bit of historical parallelism. Early Bitcoin contributors and the first known person to buy a pizza, Laszlo Haniek, bought two pizzas using Lightning Network for 6.49 milli Bitcoins. Who uses milli Bitcoins? Come on. How many Satoshis are there? 6.4 million Satoshis? Much better. A much lower price in Bitcoin terms than the 10 bit million uh, milli Bitcoin he paid for, 10, uh, for two pizzas uh, in May 2010. Piers, thank you very much for your... March, many Bitcoin users are familiar with being able to create signed messages corresponding to their Bitcoin address. There's currently no standard way to do this with pay to script hash or SegWit addresses. A discussion in March would eventually turn into BIP322, a proposal to create a generic format capable of creating a signature proof of any spendable Bitcoin script. The 2018 summary, major releases of popular infrastructure projects, in Bitcoin Core 2000, version 0 0.16 was released in February, including the default support in the wallet for receiving two SegWit addresses, uh, BIP 50, 159 support to allow pruned nodes to signal their willingness to serve recent blocks, and a number of performance improvements. The LND version 0 0.4 beta was released in March, and it was the first LND related tar uh, uh, targeting mainnet support. It also supported using Bitcoin Core as a backend, using Tor for connections, and many other features. C Lightning version 0 0.6 was released in June, redu reducing the resource requirements, provided a built in wallet, and added Tor support. LND version 0 0.5 beta was released in September to include many changes focused on making the system much more reliable.
It also dropped the requirements for full node backends to keep a transaction index, improving performance, and reducing disk space requirements. Bitcoin Core version 0.17 was released in October, included optional partial spend avoidance, the ability to dynamically create and load wallets, BIP 174 partially signed Bitcoin transaction support for communication between Bitcoin programs. April, Lightning Network Protocol Night. Lightning Network Protocol developers Christian Decker, Rusty Russell, and Oluwa Osontonkun uh, announced L2, a proposal alternative enforcement mechanism for Lightning Network. The current mechanism, mechanism, Lightning Network Penalty, requires making previous off-chain balances updates unsafe so that users don't try to put them on the blockchain. The L2 mechanism allows on-chain spending of previous balances updates to later balance updates, which in limited time windows. In normal operation, parties would normally simply publish the final channel balance on-chain, or even if a party were to publish an old balance. Their channel counterparty could simply publish the second transaction, correcting it to the first balance. Neither party would lose anything but the transaction fees they paid. The advantage of L2 is that user software does not need to manage the data that makes earlier balances updates unsafe. This is simplifies backup and reduces the risk associated with data loss. But perhaps more importantly, it makes it much easier and computationally efficient for payment channels to be updated between many users in a single on-chain transaction. This lays the groundwork for other proposals, such as channel factories, that could make Lightning Network channels 10 times or more efficient on their on-chain operations. L2 requires a soft fork to add a new op uh, optional signature hash and BIP 118 SIG hash no input unsafe. This would allow a signature author authorizing the spend of a UTXO to indicate that the signature does not apply to just that UTXO, but to any UTXO. That could be spent by a signature from the same private key. Additionally, L2's publication mechanism may not be reliably safe because current node relay policies allow transaction pinning Still, protocol developers appear optimistic about the protocol and many are hoping that the no input feature may be a part of a possible future Schnorr and Taproot soft fork proposal. May. A draft BIP for the Dandelion protocol was published to the Bitcoin Dev mailing list in May. Dandelion can privately relay transactions so that the IP address to the spender can't be reliably determined. This works even without using a method like Tor. And Dandelion can be combined with Tor to further decrease the risk of privacy compromise. Dandelion by itself only fulfill benefits users of relaying full nodes, but peer-to-peer -peer lightweight clients. And it needs to be combined with some form of encryption to prevent ISPs from being able to identify senders or spenders. However, Dandelion depart, depends in part on relay nodes pretending uh, that they've never seen a transaction they previously helped relay. This makes the node vulnerable to denial of service attacks that can base the node's bandwidth and memory. Problems with the developers are still working on addressing before adopting this protocol. 2018 sum summary of notable technical conferences and other events. The BPASE, January Stanford University. The Bitcoin Core Developers Meetup in March in New York City. The L2 Summit in Boston in May. Building in Bitcoin on July, Lisbon. Edge Dev Plus Plus in October, Tokyo. The Scaling Bitcoin Conference, October, Tokyo. The Bitcoin Core Developer Meetup, October, Tokyo. The Chain Code Lightning Residency in October, New York City. The Lightnock Protocol Development Summit in November, Adelaide. June. Matt Carollo published, uh, publicly announced a project he'd been working on for some time, a new protocol for communication from a mining pool server to individual miners and on the actual ASICs doing the work. 
named BetterHash. The protocol separates pool payout from the transaction selection. An illustration of which this is important came later in the new year when several traditional mining pools threatened to re redirect their Bitcoin hash rate to work on an altcoin. Something which miners using BetterHash could have automatically resisted. Corolo provided BetterHash with both a draft BIP and a working implementation that includes backwards compatibility uh, with the predominant stratum mining communication protocol. At the same time, a vulnerability long known to some Bitcoin protocol developers was unwittingly uh, disclosed publicly. The uh, CVE 2017-12842 makes it possible to create an SPV proof for a transaction that does not exist by specially uh, crafting a relay 64-byte transaction that gets confirmed in a block. Many lightweight wallets that depend on SPV proofs remain vulnerable even today, but the estimated cost of the attack is more expensive than the original attack against SPV trusting wallets described by Nakamoto, uh, Section 8 of the 2009 Bitcoin White Paper. So lightweight clients don't appear to be significantly less secure than they were before. For other cases where SPV proofs are used in conjunction with a full node, such when used with federated sidechains. Bitcoin Core modified its RPC to perform additional checks or provide additional information that fully mitigates the vulnerability. See these two pull requests. On the fun side, the Satoshi's Playset website by Lightning Koala rose to sudden popularity as an amusing place to spend real Bitcoins using Lightning Network. Hundreds of users paid one Satoshi per pixel to paint anything they wanted on the shared canvas, providing an amazingly efficient live demonstration of the speed and convenience of Lightning Network payments. July. After a year of advanced notice, July began with the release of the private key previously used to sign alert messages that spread throughout the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network. Alert messages didn't just warn users about problems, but also in some older re release of the softwares gave those with the alert key the ability to effectively stop all commerce on the Bitcoin network, a concerning centralization of power for a decentralized network. Details of multiple denial of service vulnerabilities against older nodes that could be performed with the alert key were released at the same time as the key. In positive news, Peter Woolley released a draft BIP uh, defining a Schnorr-based signature scheme with the goal of allowing everyone to discuss and hopefully agree upon how that aspect of adding Schnorrs to Bitcoin would work while other details of a possible soft fork are still being worked out. The proposed format would be fully compatible with existing Bitcoin private and public keys, so HD wallets shouldn't need to generate a new recovery seat. Signatures would roughly 10% smaller, slightly increasing on-chain capacity. Signatures could also be verified in batches about two times faster than they could be verified, individually, even in parallel, mainly speeding up the verification of blocks for nodes catching up. The signature scheme is compatible with the MUSIC protocol described in January or similar pro protocols, and so encompasses its benefits for increasing efficiency and privacy. Use of Schnorr also simplifies the implementation of techniques such as Taproot and Graftroot, more private payment channels for Lightning Network, more uh, private atomic swap across chains, more private atomic swaps on the same chain, providing for improved coin jobs, and other advances that imply efficiency, privacy, or both. Meanwhile, participants in the privacy roundtable described a method called pay to endpoint that can significantly improve wallet resistance to blockchain analysis by applying a limited form of coin joins uh, to interactive payments. A simplified form of the proposal also has been described. The protocol works by having the receiver of a transaction mix some of their existing bitcoins into the transaction, preventing an outside observer from being able to automatically assume that all the inputs of the transaction came from the same person. The main people who use this technique, the less reliable the input association uh, assumption becomes. 
improving privacy for all Bitcoin users, not just the people who use pay to endpoint. And we have here what Alice knows, what Alice and Bob knows, and what the network sees. So currently, we see that the inputs are both from Alice and that the outputs go to Alice's change output and to Bob's revenue. And what the network sees is there's a spender of two Bitcoin and a spender of two Bitcoin. And the output is the spender or receiver one Bitcoin and the spender or receiver three Bitcoin, because both could be the change output. Now with pay to endpoint, it looks like following. We have Alice and Alice spending two outputs and Bob spending one output. And the output is Alice's change and Bob's revenue and change. So the in, so on the what the network sees would be on the input side, uh, a spender or a receiver, because it could be Bob, a spender or a receiver, or again, a spender or a receiver. All these three are possible coin join inputs. And the outputs are a spender or receiver for both the one Bitcoin and the six Bitcoin uh, UTXO. August, a long-term effort to bring encryption to Bitcoin's network protocol received new development in August with the opening of a pull request to Bitcoin Core and the publication of a revised BIP-151. Communication encryption is already possible and recommended using Tor, which can provide other benefits, but enabling encryption by default could help protect a large number of users from eavesdropping by their ISPs. Separately, Peter Woolley has been working on a draft documentation document since February based on a protocol he and General Gregory Maxwell and others have been developing to allow opt optional authentication on top of encryption, similar to BIP-150. This would make it easier to, secure set, to securely set up whitelisted nodes across the internet of lightweight wallet bound to trusted nodes. Notably, the current idea of this is to enable authentication without revealing identity to third parties so that nodes on anonymous networks such as Tor or nodes that simply charge changed IP address couldn't have their network identity tracked. Although Woolley discovered flaws in, the, in his original document, uh, documented proposal, it's been updated as researched into developing uh, the pro protocol has proceeded. 2018 summary of the Bitcoin Optech. After starting Optech in May, we've signed up 15 companies as members, helped two workshops, uh, produced 28 weeks weekly newsletter, built a dashboard, and made a solid start on a book about individually deploying scaling techniques. To learn more about what we've accomplished in 2018 and what we have planned for 2019, please see our short annual report. September. The major news of September was the discovery, disclosure, repair, and analysis of the CVE 2018-17144 duplicate input vulnerability in unpatched Bitcoin Core versions 0.14 to 0.16.2. The vulnerability allowed a miner to create a block that spent the same Bitcoin more than once allowing unexpected inflation of the amount of Bitcoin currency. This would later be exploited on testnet temporarily, demonstrating the vulnerability, but without putting real Bitcoin at risk. There is no evidence anyone tried to attack against Bitcoin mainnet. Anyone using a released version of Bitcoin Core 0.16.3 or later is no longer at risk. Such problems can ultimately only be avoided by increasing the amount of review and automated testing that code changes receive. And for that, Bitcoin needs more reviewers, more test writers, and more organization committed to hiring or sponsoring such contributors. October, the fifth Scaling Bitcoin Conference in early October both introduced new ideas for the future of Bitcoin and refined existing ideas at relevant events. Immediately, practical talks focused on exchange security, wallet security, and safe handling of blockchain reorganizations and forks. Bitcoin Core developers are held meetings to give each developer a chance to discuss their current initiative with other developers. Separately, Lightning Network Protocol developer Rusty Russell proposed a method for splicing, which allows users to add or subtract funds from a channel without pausing payments in that channel. 
This especially helps wallets hide from their users the technical details of managing balances. For example, Alice's wallet can't automatically pay Bob off-chain or on-chain from the same payment channel, off-chain using Lightning Network through that payment channel or on-chain using a splice out withdrawal from that payment channel. A summary of the new open source infrastructure solutions. Electr Electrors, uh, released in July, provides an efficient re-implementation of Electrum-style transaction lookup server written in Rust programming language. Resources requirements are significantly lower than that for alternatives. Electrum-style servers provide the backend for many wallets and some other services. Zero, released in October by Square, provides a suite of tools and documentation to use with a hardware secure module for key management. It's designed to help exchanges and all other Bitcoin custodians securely store their Bitcoins. Esplora, released in December by Blockstream, provided the front end and back end code for Block Explore. Based in parts on Elect, it supports mainnet, testnet, and the liquid sidechain. November. Lightning Network protocol developers met in November to decide which changes to adopt for the forthcoming Lightning Network protocol specification version 1.1. Accepted changes focused heavily on usability improvements. Two changes, multipath payments described above in February and splicing in October, together can allow for wallets to almost completely hide the complexity of channel balance management from users. For example, with one click, ideally, Alice can pay Bob up to almost her full wallet balance from any combination of her channels, whether she's paying him off-chain or on-chain. Other accepted changes include increasing the maximum channel capacity, Wumbo, dual-funded channels that can help business improve their Lightning Network user experience, and hidden destinations that can help nodes stay hidden, even when routing payments for arbitrary, untrusted spenders. These topics and, other, and many others were discussed in the busiest ever month from the Lightning Dev mailing list. On the Desired change required a variance to Bitcoin course relay policy. Lightning network devs would like off-chain payments to commit to a minimum amount of on-chain fees while the channel is in use. When channel is closed, they want to use fee bumping to set the fee to an appropriate amount for the current network conditions. This is made difficult by some of Bitcoin course code for preventing denial of service attacks that unfortunately makes fee bumping unreliable in case in adversarial cases. But protocol developer Matt Carolla has proposed a new rule, a new rule that may safely import fee bumping in the case of two-party Lightning Network payments. December. Peter Woolley, Gregory Maxwell, and Glab Nomenko have researched how to reduce the amount of data used to relay Bitcoin transactions. Their initial result is Lib Minisketch, a library that allows one user with a set of elements, for example, one, two, and three, to effectively send missing elements to another user who only has part of that set, for example, one and three. No changes to Bitcoin consensus are for, required for this. It's just a different way of transmitting the same information. If implemented for relay, it can reduce overall node bandwidth for a typical case by 40 to 80%. It also keeps bandwidth low as the number of connections increases, potentially allowing nodes that make many more connections to peers in order to improve the robustness of the peer-to-peer -peer relay network. Finally, as 2018 drew to a close, developers continue to discuss how Snore signatures, Taproot, Mast, Ccash no input unsafe, and other changes might be integrated together into a concrete soft fork proposal. Protocol developer Anthony Towns concisely summarized what might be contained in a proposal if it were released today. 2018, summary of the free re fee reduction techniques. So as we see, uh, the SegWit uh, number or percentage of transaction has statically increased as well as the number of batching and opt-in replaced by fees. We surveyed a variety of techniques for reducing transaction fees whose use can easily be tracked 
by looking at confirmed transactions. Compressed pub keys save 32 bytes per use and have widely used since 2012. The number of inputs using compressed pub keys rose from about 96% in January 2000 in January to 98% in December. Segwit spends reduce the effect of witness size on fees of by up to 75%, depending on how Segwit is used. See the next graph. The number of inputs using Segwit rose from about 10% to 38% in December. Batch payments spare the size and fee overhead of sending an input or set of inputs across a greater number of outputs, making them a great way for highly high-frequency spenders like exchanges to save up to 80% on fees. The number of transaction spending to three or more outputs however, hovered around 11% all year. Note, this heuristic does not count coin joints transactions and other techniques that are not strictly payment batching. Opt-in replace by fee allows efficient fee bumping so spenders can start to paying a low fee and then increase their fee a bit later. Transaction signaling RBF rose from around 4% to 6% in December. We have some more charts and these two classes on SegWit spends. We have nested and native. Nested SegWit puts the extension mechanism inside the backwards compatible pay to script hash script, making it compatible with almost all software, but not allowing it to achieve its full efficiency. The number of inputs used using nested SegWit rose from around 10% to 33% in December. Native SegWit is more efficient, but is only compatible with wallets that support sending to SegWit addresses. This number of native SegWit inputs rose from around zero to about 5% in December. And some further charts here, the change to UTXO set size per block. A final fee-reducing trend technique we surveyed was the per block change to the size of set of UTXO unconfirmed transaction outputs. Decreasing indicates consolidation of Bitcoins into larger coins uh, that can be spent more efficiently later. And although the UTIX O size set size decreased by around 12 million entries this year. Overall, the average amount of block space used this year rarely appropriated the maximum allowed by the protocol, but it did seem to be increasing towards the max up until the beginning of December. If that trend returns and blocks become consistently full again in 2019, as they were in 2017, fees are likely to rise and wallets and businesses that implement fee reduction techniques may be able to offer their users sustainably lower costs than competitors uh, they haven't optimized. Data for all the above plots consists of valuable collections from within each block, smooth using a simple moving average over 1,000 blocks, that's roughly one week. Empty blocks, those with only a generation transaction, were excluded from analysis. Most of the above statistics may be obtained from the Optech dashboard, which is updated every block. Note, after January 1st, 2019, we will update the plot in this article to reflect all of 2018, which, at, at which point this sentence will be deleted. Well, I guess they didn't delete it. <laughs> Conclusion. We sometimes hear people requesting roadmaps for Bitcoin's development. But looking back over the development of 2018 makes it clear how futile publishing such documents would be. Many of the developments described above are things that doubt even the most advanced protocol developers uh, could have predicted a year ago. Accordingly, we have no idea exactly what 2019 has in store for Bitcoin development. We are looking forward to finding out. The Optech newsletter will return to its regular Tuesday publication featured on January 8th, and you can subscribe by email or follow our RSS feed. Some footnotes. Or Schnorr's signature proposal may not use the same opcode as current script, but single sig, multi sig, or some like musig uh, and corporative must using something like taproot could all use the same format. 
also called Merkleized Abstract Syntax Trees, because the original idea by Russell O'Connor combined the cryptographic commitment structure of Merkle trees with the, rep with the programmable language analysis technique of abstract syntax trees to provide a method for compact committing to a complex script whose elements and results from different branches could be combined. Later simplifications of the idea have removed this potential for combining and so recent proposals are unlike abstract syntax trees, leading O'Connors and others to discourage use of the original term uh, from that uh, new idea. Yet the abbreviation MAST has been used to refer to the basic technique since at least 2013. And so we've chosen to adapt Anthony Town's proposed uh, backronym Merkleized Alternative Script Trees. There this example does not correspond to any specific MAST proposal, but instead it provides a simple view of the minimum data necessary for MAST work. For accurate proposals, please see BIPs 114, 116, and 117. Uh, BIP 118, SIG hash no input unsafe, receives an unsafe ap appellation because naive use of this could allow loss of funds. For example, Alice receives one Bitcoin to one of her addresses. She then uses no input when signing a spend to off those funds to Bob. Later, Alice receives another one input, one Bitcoin to the same address. And this allows the signature from the previous transaction to be reused to send Alice a new one Bitcoin to Bob. BIP118 co-author Christian Decker has agreed to label the opcode as unsafe to encourage developers to learn about this safety concerns before, this, before they use the flag. As well, design programs can use no input safely by being careful about what is signed and what address is exposed to users for receiving payments. Lightning clients using the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer protocol do not relay transactions of other users they only send their own transactions. This means that any transactions sent from a peer-to-peer -peer like client can be associated with the client's network identity, their IP address. Dandelion is just a routing protocol and so it cannot eliminate this privacy leak. Instead, peer-to-peer uh, -peer light clients should always send transactions using anonymous networks such as Tor and should use different throwaway network identities for each spending transactions. Peers, this was a long one, but please subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter so you can uh, acquire all this information in 2019 as well. Again, uh, 2018 was a phenomenal year, not just for Bitcoins, but specifically for the Bitcoin Optech News Group. They have really put out so much amazing information uh, in such a condensed, readable, approachable, but deep, deep dive, high level information. And it, it really is fantastic uh, to have these researchers here communicating this knowledge uh, so that uh, noobs like me and you can try to understand it. And although most of this might be off our over our heads, it is nevertheless one of the most valuable resources of information that we have in Bitcoin. And I want to specifically here again, um, thank the member companies here uh, who sponsor uh, uh, this amazing endeavor uh, and make sure that well, the Bitcoin object researchers uh, get some uh, coffee and they can fill uh, right up as much as possible. Uh, and also specifically here, the founding sponsors. Uh, so Wences Casares, John Pfeffer, and Alice, uh, Alex Morcos, uh, thank you so much. Um, not just for supporting Bitcoin Optech specifically, but in that supporting the entire Bitcoin family. Uh, so thank you very much for your funding of this phenomenal endeavor. Uh, and uh, again, I wish you all the best for 2019. But of course, uh, Thank you very much to the people and the peers who are, are actually getting this done. Uh, so these are the principals and associates of Bitcoin Optech uh, who made this thing a reality in 2018. Uh, so thank you for your action. John Newberry, James O'Byrne, uh, Steve Lee, and scrolling down, David Harding, best writer in Bitcoin, Mark, Martin, sorry for that, Yachimiak, and Mike Schmidt. Uh, so all these peers, uh, fantastic, fantastic work. Uh, and again, thank you for writing in this year in a total 
of how many was it? 27 newsletters, uh, just phenomenal. Uh, the, the amount uh, of information and of course the depth of information. Piers, it's been a pleasure uh, reading these amazing newsletters to you here throughout 2018 and of course continuing this in 2019. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for falling down the rabbit hole with me here together uh, and let's continue exploring bitcoin in 2019 thank you very much and see you on the next show bye bye